Hey folks, I thought I'd do a quick video uh, demonstrating what it looks like to process an astrophoto. Um, in this case, I'm processing the Pinwheel Galaxy that I shot uh, Saturday morning, February 18th. Um, I think I, uh, I finally cleared up around 2.30 a.m. and I shot until about uh, 5.30 a.m. So I've got about 45 four-minute exposures and I'm going to demonstrate processing those in PixInsight, which is a program that many of us use. Uh, it was made specifically for processing astrophotos, and um, many of us use it. Uh, there's a, a pretty steep learning curve that comes along with it, but um, I think uh, many would agree that, uh, it, that it's worth it. Um, so I'm actually processing stacking um, my images, my 45 images, uh, along with a number of uh, calibration frames, dark frames, flat frames, and bias frames um, that I also shot. And um, this process takes quite a bit of time. It's already been running for about 10 minutes, and I was guessing it's probably got about 10 minutes to go. So uh, I'm going to pause the video here, and we'll see you back here in about 10 minutes. Okay, we're back, and I already know what you're thinking. It was a really fast 10 minutes. It wasn't for me, because it took a lot longer than 10 minutes. Anyway, our stacking process is done, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over the outcome of, of the stacking process. So I'm gonna bring in the red channel, and I've asked PixInsight to separate the channels, so I'm not getting a color image. I'm actually getting three images. Uh, one's red, one's green, and one's blue. So I'm bringing them in one at a time, and I don't need these re rejection photos. And as I do them, I'm going to rename them to just R. That for the red. Let's bring in the green. Again, I don't need the rejection photos. Let's re-identify it as green. And then blue. Alright, so we have red, green, and blue. So I need this. Alright. So they don't look like much. And they won't. So I'm going to combine the red, the green, and the blue, and hopefully that'll give us a nice color image of the galaxy. So we're going to use channel combination. And all I'm doing here is it's asking me for the red channel. So I'm going to say, OK, and here's the red channel. Because I've renamed them R, G, and B, just for simplicity. This one is asking for the green channel, so there it is. And this one's asking for the blue channel, so I'm going to give it the blue channel there. So I'm going to OK. I'm going to minimize these because I'm not going to need them anymore, hopefully. There's red, there's green, and there's blue. And I'm going to go ahead and apply. And there we go. It's given me an RGB image, red, green, and blue. And again, you're thinking to yourselves, well, it doesn't look like you have anything there. But actually, if I do a, a temporary stretch, we're going to see something. And there's our pinwheel galaxy. Now, it's, it, it's very green, so there's another process that I need to do called dynamic background extraction. Dynamic background extraction. And I've got pretty much the processes that I'm going to use already open here. So let's go ahead and start the dynamic background extraction. And I'm going to click on the image there. We're going to change the model parameters to tolerance. It's going to be 2.0. The shadows relaxation, relaxation should be 6.0. Uh, then we're going to go to sample generation here. I'm going to change this to 150 
and that will give me some nice big squares which you'll see in a moment. Uh, and then the target, target image correction, we're going to change that to uh, division. We're going to replace the target image and we're going to discard the background model because we're not going to need it. But I'm going to run this process a second time using subtraction. So what I can do is I can take this uh, blue triangle and drag it off. Then I can use it again here in a moment and change that one setting. It'll keep everything else. But let's go ahead and uh, generate my sample generation. And then I'm going to delete everything in the center. So delete, and it's hard to see here because green and green don't show up very well. I'm going to delete all these middle squares. And what this is doing is it's kind of sampling the background and it tells the image kind of what's normal about the background and, and keep that. And we don't want it changing anything about our image. Okay, we've gotten rid of all of these. Now, one of the things we want to do is, um, oops, I got a few more here. Okay, we don't want any of these squares on top of bright stars, like this one, for example. So let's move that off. This one's kind of on a, the edge of a bright star. Let's move that, move these off. That's kind of on the edge of a bright star there. Let's move that away, move that off. That's good. like it's not even a star it might be a nebula anyway so what I want to do this I copied this process already but I don't want that one because I've made changes so let's go ahead and uh, delete that and drag it off one more time and then we're going to go ahead and run this okay so that's made some changes uh, I'm going to close it I'm going to run this process again and this time we're going to change it to subtraction and run it again. All right, so you didn't see much there, but I assure you it did something. So let's go ahead and close this. We're done with it. Now I want to do, um, so what I've done already here is I've stretched the image, but it's not really stretched. That was just kind of a, a sample stretch, uh, but I want to stretch it for real. So that, so that we see what our image is going to look like. So let's go here to script, uh, easy processing suite, easy soft stretch. And we can see our image here and the colors are all kind of lined up pretty nicely, red, green, and blue. So we're just going to run it. And there we go. There's our pinwheel galaxy. Uh, we've got quite a bit left to do. Um, First off, probably you ought to go and uh, run a process or a script called AutoColor. Uh, it does a very good job of, of giving us the colors that it should, should have. So let's go ahead and run that. It'll take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause the video once again. Okay, so our AutoColor is finished, and it's kind of hard to see but uh, it has corrected some of the color aspects of our image here um, we'll see uh, more of that as, as we get further along in the process I'm going to run a process called a noise exterminator which is an add-in uh, a recent add-in noise exterminator and blur exterminator are recent add-ins for PixInsight so let's go ahead and run noise exterminator if you look at the image uh and let, let me see if i can zoom in but uh zoom in into an area over here out here where there really isn't anything you can kind of see all this fuzzy uh grainy looking uh parts and and we don't want that we want uh, we want a, an image that has less noise, and this is noise, and it gets generated by uh, the 
for conditions, uh, environment, uh, sky conditions, um, the camera can induce noise, um, all kinds of factors induce noise in an astro photo and, uh, and you want to try to clean some of that up. Now this noise exterminator is, is great, it works very well and having it at 0.9 is probably a little too much. I usually bring this back to about 0.75. Um, at 0.9 it just gets too blurry so let's see what this looks like like if we run it at 0.75. I'm going to go ahead and run it. as some of the other processes. Okay, so you can already see that a lot of the noise that was in that previous image is, is gone. Uh, let me go ahead and oh, minimize that. Oops. And if I go back, you can kind of see there's there's before, very noisy, after, before, after. Very nice, very nice. All right, let's go ahead and um, run Blur Exterminator. This is going to help us sharpen up the image a little bit. It's also going to take some of these stars uh, that are very uh, big and kind of egg-like egg um, and minimize them just a, a little bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and I'm keeping all of the defaults for Blur Exterminator. Uh, I'm going to do a, a real-time preview. So that's going to open a window that uh, gives us a preview and this is running. This takes a, a bit of doing, uh, so it takes a minute. So we're going to pause here again, and we'll see you back here in a moment. Okay, so our Blur Exterminator has finished, and I think you can tell uh, from this uh, preview that it's really done a nice job of um, increasing the, uh, the sharpness of our image. You can see these dust lanes uh, in the galaxy have, uh, have improved. So let's go ahead and close the preview. Uh, and minimize the blur exterminator. Let's put this up here where it's supposed to be. And our next process is going to be the uh, histogram transformation. So let's go ahead and open that. Set the values. I'm going to apply the values. And again, we're going to want to do a real time preview so that, you know, any changes we make here, we can watch what we're doing. And, you know, if we don't like it, uh, we don't have to apply them. Uh, but let's go ahead and one of the things I want to do is uh, our, our image looks very washed out here. And uh, even though the, the night sky isn't completely 100% totally black. Uh, we don't want it to be a uh, light gray color, right? Uh, and so we're going to uh, bring this a little bit closer with this with this point, a little bit closer to our color points here. And as you can see, as I do this, it's, it is darkening the sky. Uh, but we don't want to, you know, we want to leave a little foot there. We don't want to. We don't want to lose any data. We don't want to lose any color data from from our from our image. So let's go to about right there. I don't think I'm impinging upon any of the data, and the sky looks nice and dark there. So let's go ahead and apply that. So it always happens when I apply. It looks terrible in the in the preview. But let's go ahead and just close this preview and. And if we take a look at our image, it's starting to look pretty nice there. So let's go ahead and minimize the histogram transformation. 
And let's uh, bring up the curves transformation. And what this will do is it'll help us brighten our image a little bit. So let's go ahead and reset the values. I'm going to check mark here and, and there's uh, what we produced in the previous process. Now I'm going to take and grab this uh, line here. I'm going to make a little bit of a curve. All right. And whoops. I don't want to do that yet. Let's reset it. We want a real time preview like we did before. Fortunately, that hasn't done anything to our image. So anyway, let's go ahead and reset. We've got a real time preview here. Let's grab the line right up here in the upper right hand corner and let's move it up in brightness just a little bit. Yeah, we want to brighten up the target. That looks pretty nice. Actually, maybe a little too much. Let's bring it back a little bit. Okay, I like that. I think that looks nice. Let's go ahead and apply that. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And uh, our image is starting to look pretty nice. And uh, really, there's just one more thing I need to do, and that's going to be uh, saturation. And uh, this will make some of the color in our galaxy pop out. Uh, it's still a little bit, uh, you know, washed out, um, but the data is in here. You know, when we collect these images, the data is in each of the files. Um, but we need processes like this to pull the data out. Um, and so let's go ahead and do that. Let's reset the numbers here again again we're going to bring up the real-time preview and right here in this center line there's a little nub over here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take and i'm going to click on that and i'm going to start slowly bringing that up and once i get to about this line maybe a little bit over we can start seeing that some of our blue stars look like blue stars and some of our orange stars look like orange stars. Um, I'm going to go to right about there and stop. Don't want to oversaturate and make it look unnatural. So let's go ahead and click apply. And that looks a little bit unnatural to me uh, there, but again, that's just the preview. Let's close that. And, uh, and here's here's our our image. Here's our pinwheel galaxy, and uh, and I think that looks pretty nice. So that's what it takes to process uh, an astrophoto. Uh, you know, once you've spent the time, you know, that it takes to collect the data. Um, you know, you're not done. Uh, you need to process the data and really bring the data out. So I hope you liked this video. Um, it probably it turned out to be longer than I thought, but um, I hope you enjoy it anyway. Um, have a great day. Thanks. Bye.